I want you to go with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 5 or I don't know, your, your phone or iPad or whatever. And I'm going to just quote this verse. And I love this verse because I quote it quite often. And I want to tell you how to do that. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1, it says this very simply. Be ye therefore imitators of God as dear children. Uh, the King, old King James says, be you therefore followers of God, but the, the more correct translation means imitators. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1, be you therefore imitators of God as dear children. Notice this as a child. Why do he say as dear children? Because children are born believers until you teach them to doubt. So anytime you hear doubt of any kind, eject it out of your innermost being because it will destroy you. It's a cancer. You should never doubt anything when it comes to the word of the living God. You don't have to understand it by no means, sometimes God does some things none of us understand. It's like one man told me one time he was mad at me, you know, because he, he called me a prosperity healing preacher. Well, what's wrong with that? I, I said, I'll take that. Why don't you preach the whole counsel of God? I said, I don't know the whole counsel of God. And neither do you. And neither does any preacher on this planet. Because we could be spending eternity understanding and developing in the whole counsel of God. I mean, Brother Hagin preached, I don't know, my God, faith for over 60-something years and just scratched the surface. Thinking that Brother Copeland's been preaching, I don't know, 57 years, I think it is. Now, maybe a little more, preaching on prosperity and just scratched the surface. See what I'm saying? So no one knows the whole counsel of God. But as we develop and grow and become an imitator of him, uh, we become what he says. So let me read that scripture again, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Be ye therefore imitators of God as dear children. Now, how you do that? There's four ways that you do that, that you imitate God. Number one, you can write it down if you're taking notes. Holiness is one of the ways you imitate God. God said, be you holy for I am holy. Number two, wisdom. God said wisdom is the principal thing. You get wisdom, you get understanding. Number three, power. So notice holiness, wisdom, power. And, and, and God said, I didn't give you a spirit of fear, but of, of power. See, so that's how you imitate God. And number four, love. Because for God so loved the world, so each and every one of us must love the world also. We're in the world, but we're not of it. Now, I'm not talking about what the world does. I'm talking about when you understand that, the, uh, 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 that God counts his wealth by the souls he possesses, not by the pearly gates or the diamond, barrel, jasper, onyx, ruby, and all of, you know, the stuff that they have in heaven, but by you, by people because he created us in his image and in his likeness. Now, you see, all religions and Christianity ought to have those four things to imitate God. Sad to say they don't. And a lot of times, if you don't, quote, believe like they believe, they throw you out, or they call you this, or they call you that. Well, that's not wrong. That's not, that's not right. They should to do these four things. Let me say it again. Number one is holiness. Number two, wisdom. Number three, power. And number four, love. So I want to deal first with holiness. So there's four ways to imitate God. One is holiness. Write this down if you're taking note. The God of Israel was distinguished from all other gods by, by this essential element. All the other gods did all kind of orgies, killing babies, all the different things, the statues, but God was known as holy. Think about that, holy. Holy. So let me say it again so you'll understand. The God of Israel, which is the God who we serve, was distinguished from all other gods by this essential element. You must be holy in everything that you do, spiritual, physical, financial. You should, your money should be holy. Your body should be holy. You see, your spirit definitely is holy because it's got Christ in you, the hope of glory. So that's a wonderful element to have is holiness. Now, the church is really messed up on that because they called it clothesline preaching. They thought holiness was if you didn't wear no makeup and back in the, in the Pentecostal days. I'm going to tell you something about Pentecostals, and I've said it before, and, and, I, and I'm going to say it again. I honestly believe that the highest level of Christianity is Pentecost. Being a Pentecostal, being filled with the Spirit, with the nine gifts, the nine fruits, the fullness of the Godhead bodily. I mean, that's as high as you can get. It's above Catholic, Protestant, Jewish, or if you want to get into the Christianity, you know, Catholic, Simmons of God, Church of God, Church of Christ, Word of Faith, Full Gospel, Simmons of God, Episcopal, Presbyterian, all these different things. See what I'm saying? The highest level to get is Pentecost. Pentecostal. That's why God said, go to, go to Jerusalem, be endued with power. You will be endued with Pentecostalism. Now, here's the point I'm going to say. It's the highest level, but I find Pentecostals don't grow very much. 
Why? Because they get ca caught up in homiletics, hermeneutics, philosophy, and theology. In other words, if you don't believe like I believe, you're going to hell. Well, who do you think you are? You can't judge somebody in hell. First, uh, that, only God does those things. Well, we know them by their fruit. Most of you are not fruit inspectors to start with. See, I mean, you don't know if you got a good melon or a bad melon until you cut it. You know, but now some people know how to thump that thing. And if it sounds right, they'll say, that's a good one. So but a lot of times they don't grow very much, so they fight a lot. Church splits. And yet it shouldn't be because it's the highest level of Christianity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost are living and decreeing and declaring inside of you. What made the Catholic, grow, the Catholic Church grow exponentially because they were going down was the charismatic movement way back in, started out in the uh, late 60s. Or, and my God, man, it added millions and millions of people to the Catholic faith. Why? Holy Ghost. See what I'm saying? And they didn't call it Pentecostal. They call it charismatic. Well, one, one, one way, one way, half a dozen, the other, and all that kind of stuff. So holiness is very important. Write this down. Ho what does holiness do? It affects duty. It affects conduct. It affects aim. And it affects ambition. Be ye holy for my, I am holy. So holiness affects duty, conduct, aim, and ambition. You understand? What do you mean by duty? Well, you do this unto God. Everything you do, you don't do it to yourself to try to make you something. You have a duty. And then you have a conduct. People know if you're a Christian through the holiness that you are. And then the aim, what you're willing to do. A person that's holy will have a vision of what to do, when to do it, where to do it, and how to do it. Because they think in God and Him crucified. And then ambition. That ambition should be wrapped up in holiness so you don't try to hurt someone in your way to the top. And just because uh, you are rung or two higher on the ladder than someone else doesn't mean you're better than them you see, in any way, shape, or form. A lot of people think that, but that's not right. So holiness, if you truly understand in its purity, affects duty, it affects conduct, it affects aim, and it affects ambition. I wrote this a while ago when I was just sitting in my office here. So when you understand that, that's, that's one of the ways to imitate God. Is your duty imitating God? Is your conduct imitating God? Is your aim imitating God? Is your ambition imitating God? When people see you, they say, I, you, I distinguish that man or that woman because they're holy people. Think about this. Now, in the Old Testament, people wrote holiness or thought holiness was on certain things. The cup. You see what I'm saying? The vestments. Um, uh, the, uh, the Ark of the Covenant things. But write this down. Jesus didn't write holiness on vessels or vestment or vestments of any kind. What he did, he lived it. He showed you what holiness was. And it wasn't just a cup. And it just wasn't a gold box. He lived it. Because that's who Christ is. You know, that's why the Holy Spirit, you can't, the Bible said, if you blaspheme, there's no remission of sin. Because he's holy, pure. What makes a child a child? Holiness. Purity. That's why you get real angry if you hear that someone sexually molested a child. Why would you do that? A child's innocent, clean, and pure. And your evilness, you see, and I don't understand why people do those things. Well, I do. I know it's the devil, but, but it's so um, mind-boggling to anyone with any common sense because when you think of a baby, you think holy. It's, it's innocent, which means it hasn't sinned. Now, I don't want to get you into your doctrinal thing about uh, the original sin on the soul and all that kind of stuff. Sin has to be committed to become a sinner. But you see, the church world got into this, and, you know, they started saying, if, uh, we're going to give you this so we can get the original sin off your soul. The only person who can take away your sin is God Almighty, you see, and no one else. No vestment, no vessel, no doctrine, none of that. It's when you say, Father, I repent. Babies can't repent till they come to the age of accountability. Why? They're holy. See, so when I'm saying that again, so you'll get it. Jesus did not write holiness on vessels or vestments, you know, like the, the, uh, the priest of the old covenant that was considered holy clothes. He lived it. See, and when you live it, people see it. That's number one being a, to imitate God. You must be holy for I'm holy. There's no secret sin in my life. I'm not chasing women. 
I'm not stealing money. I'm not doing any of that crazy stuff. Not that I'm perfect, because no one is, but I've made up my mind that I want to be an example of holiness so I can imitate God as a child. So you grow to the fullness of the stature of Christ, but you keep the mentality of a child that doubt is not a part of what you are. Are y'all getting this? Now, number two, wisdom. What is wisdom? Well, wisdom is the ability to use knowledge. In other words, you shouldn't be a stupid Christian. You shouldn't be ignorant, dumb, and when the Word of God is so full of knowledge. And wisdom is the ability to use knowledge. Write this down. God has expressed revelation and lifted the veil so we don't have to walk in darkness but light. You see, when you went into the holies of the holies, it was totally dark. When God, when God was on the mountain rumbling, there were 70 elders that Moses brought up there. But God said, come into the darkness. He had to put that because you would die when the light would ex expose to you. You see what I'm saying? So what God has done through wisdom has expressed revelation. That's the ability, revelation, revelation knowledge, and lifted the veil so we don't have to walk in darkness, but light. So don't tell me I, I couldn't help myself. Oh, yes, you can. You walk right into the dark, and we should be walking into the light. Or, you know, so all you got to do is turn, the, turn on your hard light and let your light so shine before men that they see what? Your good works. Because most people only see what you do, not what you are. They really should see what you are. But what you do normally determines what you are. So when you understand that, number two, to imitate God, you must use wisdom. God has expressed revelation and lifted the veil so we don't have to walk in darkness, but light. Now, I'm going to give you a prime example of this. You can write this down. If I'm going too fast, I'll go over it a minute again. The man Solomon. Everybody remember Solomon? The uh, you know, richest king, richest person would ever live. The man Solomon pleased God because he desired wisdom. He pleased God because he desired wisdom, which is to imitate God. God is a God of wisdom. And he could ask for money. He could ask for everything. And, and there wasn't wrong with that. But God said, because you asked me for this, it pleased God that he asked so he could think like God, talk like God, be like God, smell like God. And God was pleased with him, but he messed up because he let politics get involved. So he started marrying what are called strange women. Not so he could have sex with them, he did, but he had, uh, what, he had uh, 700, not, uh, 300 wives and 700 concubines. I mean, my Lord. But it wasn't that. He wanted to, he formed political relationships so that a country wouldn't attack Israel, so I'll marry their daughter. And back in that day, that's what they did. Wrong. You put three drops of oil in a 55-gallon drum of water, pollutes the whole thing. Three drops. Three. 55 gallons of water. Take a, a dropper, you know, like an eardrop. One, two, three. Shut down. So let me say it again. The man Solomon pleased God because he desired wisdom. He wanted to imitate God. And that's what God does. So how you imitate God? Number one, holiness. And number two, wisdom. Write this down. Wisdom is God's most beauteous attribute. And it's also the greatest knowledge in mankind. Why did he say wisdom is the principal thing? How do I run this ministry? By wisdom. How do you do your work? How do you know how to do it? By wisdom. See, in everything we do, whatever department you're in, why did that go wrong? So you try to figure out how to fix it. And you gain knowledge, but then after a while, people will start calling you and asking you, how do you do that? That's wisdom talking. You see, you went past knowledge. Wisdom is the ability to use knowledge. Let me say it again. Wisdom is God's most beauteous attribute and it's also the greatest knowledge in man. So in other words, you have to grow to the fullness of the stature of Christ. That growth is wisdom. That's imitating God. Number, number one with holiness. Got to have it. There's no other choice in the matter. And number two is wisdom. They go together. You, like I said, you don't want to be a dumb Christian and you, or a dumb person. And dumbness is not your IQ. See, a lot of people think that is. Because they set that level of standard. No, it's learning how to live with people and how to work with people in every which way, shape, or form. 
and how to take terrible uh, anger and turn it into love. It's amazing how you, that's why he said, bless those that curse you. It's going to take wisdom to do that. Pray for those that despitefully use you. That's going to take wisdom to do that. And holiness. See, so when you understand that, that's a very beautiful attribute that God has given to you and it, it comes out of you as knowledge. But eventually when people see how, how you change hard things and make them easy, they go, they start calling you and asking you for wisdom because they see it's another level. So how do you imitate God? Number one is holiness. Number two is wisdom. Now, number three, power. You got to have power in life because people notice power. Whether it's good power or bad power. What makes a hurricane dangerous? Power. What makes a thunderstorm or a tornado dangerous? Power. If you don't have power, your lights go off. Power is very important. That's how you imitate God. Don't say, I just don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I'm just not much enough. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, it's a wimp talking. God is not wimpish. Let me say that again. Number one, to imitate God, you must have holiness. Number two, you must have wisdom. And number three, you must have power. Write this down about power. To imitate God, we must have power over ourselves. Say myself. Yeah, that wasn't enough. Say myself. That's where all the power is, right there. If you can control you, you can control anything else. To imitate God, we must have power over ourselves and influence over others. See, when you have power over yourself, your influence will go over to others. You have to be influential. Now, don't just define that as money. No, influential. To so find out what to do, when to do it, where to do it, and how to do it. Well, people will listen to you. See, that's how you imitate God. So number one, number one is holiness. Number two is wisdom. Number three is power. To imitate God, we must have power over ourselves and influence over others. You have to learn to crucify yourself. You have to have the ability to say no to yourself. I, uh, you, I have to protect Jesse from Jesse. Did you get that? Because the Jesse that sometimes I want to use is not nice. Why do I want to love somebody I don't like? Why would I want to repent? Let's just kill him. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? But you say that because you don't have power over yourself. So you're certainly not going to influence anyone else. Let me say it again. To imitate God, we must have power over ourselves and influence over others. Why? God had that given us a spirit of fear, but of what? Power. Of what? Power. You shall receive what after the Holy Ghost has come upon you? Who? Who? my God. I can do all things through Christ. Why? Power. Who strengtheneth you? See, your power has the ability to conquer sin. Go write that down. Your power has the ability to conquer sin, which means... That's imitating God. To tell a woman you're not going to have sex with her because she's not your wife. Or it's not in the right position. And let me make this another. There ain't nothing wrong with sex. God created it. But there's a system so that you never have to be abused. And that's exactly what that means. You're not, not God. In other words, you want to you, you have sex with this woman? You want to have sex with this man? Sign the contract. Till death do you part. Everything you got, sir, belongs to her. Everything she got belongs to you. And they go knock yourself out. I don't care if you fall down. We have to pray for your healing. Because you see, it's the right time. It's the right place. It's honoring each other. So you never hear the word, he went a whoring with other gods. See, y'all getting this? It takes power to do that. You have to have that power. That's imitating God, holiness, wisdom, power. I need to preach this at Covenant Church. And if I do, I'll add a lot more to it. I'm just kind of hit and miss it. I just wrote this up a few minutes ago. So your power has the ability to conquer sin. And I'm going to say this, and I mean, I don't sin every day. Why? Because I have conquered sin. Now, I have sinned. The Bible said we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But you don't sin every day. Oh, and if you get a bad thought, you think that's a sin? No, that's just injected in your mind. Don't speak it, it dies unborn, it aborts itself. Just that simple. 
See what I'm saying? So there's a lot of stuff that the church makes you try, try to make you feel bad about when you shouldn't be feeling bad at all because you have the ability to conquer sin. For the carnal mind to be dead, to be spiritual mind is life and peace. Life and peace. Peace means possession of adequate resource. Being not transformed, but not being conformed, but be transformed. See, because of this thing called sin. And the word sin simply means missing the mark. So we kind of like to put the, the Catholic Church calls it uh, uh, venial sins and what's the other one? Mortal sins. No, sin, sin. See, the, you know, religion tries to do what the, <laughs> what the government does. First degree, second degree, manslaughter, you know, trying to, no, if you hurt somebody, it's hurt. If you kill somebody, my God, if it's, What's the difference between manslaughter and murder? And the worst one is predestinated murder. Or predestinate. What's, what? Premeditated. That's what I was saying. Premeditated murder. <laughs> well, they probably predestined it in their mind before they did. And you get the death penalty automatically on that. Because you see, it, you didn't lose your, uh, uh, your mind or anger. You thought it out. You did it. But in God's mind, it's all the same because it's sin. So number one, how do I imitate God? Holiness, wisdom, power. And now the last one, love. Why love? It's one of the most powerful situations you've ever seen. Love is the common element in which all perfections meet. Love. Let me say it again. Love is the common element in which all perfection, be you perfect, like the Bible said, but matured, meet, comes under that umbrella of love. Now, how does it grow and develop? By exercise? You know, this is love. Bless your enemies. Whew. Pray for those that's that, that's working out. Oh, God. You see, love is the common element in which all perfections meet. Love grows and develops by exercise. As you grow older, in your marriage, you should love each other more. You should. It's just common sense. Why not? Because you see all this other stuff when you first got mad, you're so hot to just get to each other. <laughs> like a dog panting, man. But what happens is, as you grow older in, in your marriage or older in the Lord, you grow to that fullness of the statue of Christ. So if she gets old and fat, it's okay. If she gets old and skinny, it's okay. If he gets bald-headed and ugly, it's okay. Because you're not even thinking about that. Why? Because you're in one mind and one accord on a foundation of perfection. Because love is perfect. It's kind. See? And love grows and develops by exercise. You have to learn that. See, that's imitating God. When you see a good marriage together, that's imitating God. Think about that for a minute. You think, man, them people just truly love each other. That's imitating God. I, I, I'm going to say this. I, I thought David and Betty were a little bit more perfected than me on their love uh, to show it. David couldn't go anywhere without holding Betty's hand. I used to notice that all the time. They always held a hand. Kathy was trying to hold my hand. I kept slapping it. Get your hand on me. My, my God. Control yourself. See, I wasn't perfected in that. <laughs> That's the truth. That's what Kathy said. That's the truth. She wanted to hold, she told me, she said, you know, David holds Betty's hand. I said, well, go hold her hand too if you want. I said, well, for God's sake, man. What, I mean, why do you have to do that? I mean, you know, you know, don't you ever hold somebody's hand in sweats? Don't you hate a sweaty hand? <laughs> but that's stupid. It's still, I'm wrong. But I noticed that. Y'all would go anyway, y'all would hold, y'all, I'm saying I'm wrong. You would hold, y'all would hold hands. And I thought, why? I know he loves her. I know she loves him. Why? Why you got to kiss her every time you walk out the door? You're just going to the trash can. 
See, that's not, understand, that's not imitating God. Isn't that amazing? Mm. Love grows and develops by exercise. And I'm still exercising it. <laughs> no, I'm getting a little peanuts from the peanut gallery over here. <laughs> Write this down. Because we are born again, and I love this statement. See, he likes it too. <laughs> because we are born again, we have inherited. Say that, inherited. inherited. Because we are born again, we have inherited the characteristics of the Father. What is the Father's characteristics? John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved, he just didn't love, he so loved. And he told me, I count my wealth by the souls I possess, not by pearly gates or gold streets. See, that's what we have inherited, those characteristics. You see what I'm saying? And it surpasses everything. But it won't work without holiness. And it won't work without wisdom. And it won't work without power. Those four ways, very simple. I need to preach that. I keep saying I need to preach that to cover the church, but develop it a lot more. I got a lot of more stuff in my mind as I'm thinking about it. It's coming up in my mind. So when you understand that, those characteristics of God, I've had people say, why do you do that? Well, that's what, that's what God would do. Why'd you give all your money away? That's what God would do. Why do you believe in laying hands on the sick? That's what God would do. Why well, aren't you prejudiced, Brother Jesse? You don't see color at all. That's what God would do. I've developed that characteristic or that DNA. So I don't think color at all. I'll drink from the same glass you were drinking. I don't care what color, nationality, creed you are. I could care less about any of that. And I make jokes about people, and someone don't want to do that. I said, I have no germs if you want to drink from this glass. And it, well, you go, no, I don't want to. But if, if you're thirsty enough, you will. You know what I'm trying to say? If there's nothing else to have, man, you, know, you do what you want to do. I, I don't, I'm just saying, that, you see, when you understand that, that's what God would do. God would go the extra mile. And if there was a, a dead end, he'd, he'd, build a, he'd build a road so you'd never hit the dead end. Isn't that good? He just can't. That's what God would do. Why don't you retire? Because God hadn't retired. I'm going to imitate him. I really believe if Jesus tarries, uh, I don't know when that day will come. It may come soon. It may not come soon. But I will do what God does. Notice God is generational. Abraham. I give you this promised land. He never once stepped foot in it, Abraham. God did. It's for your children, your descendants. Then when he got there, he said, okay, generational, 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 until that great and wonderful day when time stops. You won't get old no more. There will be no more sickness. None of that. No more jealousy, envy, and strife. Death will be dead. An enemy and the last one to be destroyed. Satan thrown in a lake of fire. It's almost unbelievable, isn't it, to have a perfect world. Hmm. So many kids dying, even as I'm talking right now, because of hunger, because they don't have nothing to eat, because they don't have a dollar. World doesn't care. It doesn't. Isn't that sad? That's not imitating God. When Jesus ate, he fed people too. In fact, he gave his lunch. Because it was given to him. So let me say this. Because we were born again, we have inherited the characteristics of the Father. Why do you do this? That's what God would do. Why do you tithe? Well, God gave me more than 10%. He gave me his only begotten son. 
I couldn't do that to Jody. I wouldn't let you hurt Jody. I would hurt you. I'm not, I'm not there yet. I'm not going to lie. I'm not, I, you know, I think I'm pretty close to God, but I ain't there yet. You hurt, you hurt Meredith and uh, Jody or Kathy. You, you're going to deal with somebody you've never seen before. And I'm saying it, and I'm not proud of that. I wish I could go, well, praise God. But, <laughs> yeah. but look what God did. God. But I, it's in my DNA. I got to develop it. Did y'all enjoy it this morning? Give the Lord a hand clap for that. Okay. Do y'all want me to go over some of these points real quick? Or was I talking too fast? What? Yay or nay? Yes. Yes? Okay. Four ways to imitate God. Ephesians 5 verse 1. Be ye therefore imitators of God as dear children. Remember the children part. Holiness. The God of Israel was distinguished from all other gods by this essential element. He was a holy God. Holiness affects duty, conduct, aim, and ambition. I could preach an hour right there. Jesus didn't write holiness on vessels. Nothing wrong with that. Or vestments, nothing wrong with that. He lived it. The moment you see holiness, it's wonderful. Then wisdom comes in. God has expressed revelation and lifted the veil so we don't have to walk in darkness but light. What was Jesus called? The light of the world. When he tore the veil, all that darkness went light. Everybody could see right through it. The man Solomon pleased God because he desired wisdom. Wisdom is God's most beauteous attribute and is also the greatest knowledge in man. Wisdom is the principal thing. You get wisdom, you get understanding. Then I went to power. Notice that holiness, wisdom, power. To imitate God, we must have power over ourselves. Very important point. And influence over others so they can have power over themselves. God had not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. What is that? Power. And then I told you, your power has the ability to conquer sin. It really does. And I finish it out with love. Love is the common element in which all perfections meet. Think about it. All comes to that one central point. Love grows and develops by exercise. It's an amazing statement. Because we are born again, we have inherited the characteristics of the Father. Think about that. So next time you think, I just don't know if I can make it. Oh, you can more than make it. Let me help you. You've already made it. All you got to do is accept it. And once you accept it, that's when true faith kicks in. That's, that's when true faith kicks in. And uh, put this on my desk too, if you don't mind. And when you understand that, that faith will work for you. And it'll grow, son. And I love living by faith, walking by faith, talking by faith, believing by faith. It's exciting. Stand to your feet. It is 12.02. I hope you enjoyed it. I hadn't talked to you all in a while. And um, might maybe do a couple of faith to facts on some of that stuff, you know, and uh, things of that nature. And when you understand that, that's how you imitate God. Yeah. And I could have put, I could put another one in there. Pardon. Pardon. How you imitate a pardon? He says, I will pardon you. He not only washed your sin away. You see, now I'm starting to talk at Covenant Church. So I, I, I can come up with so much stuff. He expunged your record. Has anybody sinned? Hold your hand up. Anybody committed murder here? Do you know if you hate your brother, you've committed what? Murder. Now, how many of you have committed murder? Do you, do you understand what this is? That's what wisdom, that's what that, to imitate God. I mean, it, it takes it to a level beyond human reasoning. But you're there. All you have to do is accept it. So thank you all. Take a little extra. It's 12.05, 12.06, and you go to lunch, okay? God bless you. Bye-bye. That's a blessing. 
Hello, Jesse here. I know you've been blessed today and you don't want to miss any of our upcoming videos. That's why you need to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell. That notification bell lets you know when we post new videos. So like, subscribe, and hit the bell. See you next time. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.